Welcome back. We're talking with Allison Strickland and Tasha Sullivan from Interact. We've learned about uh, red flags to look for to detect domestic violence, but I'm now wondering, are there any barriers that keep people in? We've talked a bit about that. And if I am a, uh, a victim of abuse or someone who's watching this morning is, they call you, what happens at Interact? What are the, what's the first thing that happens from your perspective? Well, Interact's primary goal is to provide support to victims wherever they are in the process. And we do that through a wide variety of programs. You know, all of our services are confidential and voluntary, which means that we want the victim to receive the information that they need to make the choices that they're ready to make at that time. You know, so we have our 24-hour crisis line that are, counselors are trained to speak with victims over the phone. We also have our residential program, which is when a victim decides to leave, one of the things that she might need is a safe place to go. She might not have anywhere that she can go with her and, and her children. That. And we do, do, and we are always full. And so oh, that's we're sad. always working I'm with sorry. people. I'm <laughs> sorry, I mean, I'm glad you're there, but that's very sad. Right, well, the, the positive thing about it is that we have case managers and counselors that work in the shelter you know, to provide that long-term support through the duration of their stay. And we're very proud of the fact that you know, once uh, victims have gone through our residential program, 90% of them choose to stay out of the relationship and not return to their abuser, mm -hmm. which is a much higher statistic than we see national nationally. So. so what happens in this program? Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that victims need to learn that, that maybe the skills they don't have right now in order to survive outside the relationship? Well, a lot of our case management program, which is not only with people who have decided to reside in our shelter program, but also with victims mm -hmm. who ha maybe have a safe place to stay with friends and family in the community, but also need some support, it focuses on some of those long-term goals like gainful employment, educational opportunities, finding stable housing, figuring out childcare, transportation, you know, all of those needs that move the person past that initial crisis and into that phase of living the rest of their life in a hopeful and safe way. So you, you learn these life skills. What mm -hmm. about the, the mental health aspect of things? I gotta believe if you're in an abusive relationship, especially for mm -hmm. any length of time, that your self-esteem is probably mm -hmm. gone. Yes, because that's uh, one of the mechanisms that helps people, uh, gets people how, to how stay. How do you restore right? something in, an, in, a, in a person like that? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, obviously it's possible. Yes. And you know, we see that transformational change happen, and you know it's such a Can joy to what behold. What's that like for you? It is. It's wonderful. I mean, what, is it, what is that like yeah. for you to see someone who comes in who, and then when they, I don't, for lack of a better word, graduate from the program and move on and have an independent life? What's that like for you? It's wonderful. I mean, you know, the work is hard, but seeing the strength and resilience of people in our community and. Um, the people that we work with and have the opportunity to help, it's, it's amazing, so we that's great. We see some of the most courageous people in our community. Right. And um, when people are stuck in the situation and think there's no way out, um, we see that there is a way out because we see it through the lives of so many people who come into contact with Interact each year. And the wonderful thing is the relationships we're able to build with um, survivors long after that abuse has ended and they're able to come back and, um, and, sh and tell us how their lives have changed. Mm -hmm. And it's really um, just the most incredible thing to see. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering um, if you could address what it's like for the kids in, in that kind of a relationship. I think sometimes, you know, the parents really don't see the, they don't believe that the children are impacted by it. But obviously they are. They are. I mean, what, what happens to the kids in an abusive relationship? Mm -hmm. And what do, you what do you do to help them? It's a really good question. I think children are often you know, the silent victims of all of this, you know, because living in a home like that puts them under a constant state of, of stress, and, you know, that becomes their norm. So being able to help children see that there is a loving, safe relationship and family life that is possible for them um, is wonderful too. And, you know, we have children's case managers and counselors, and, you know, we, we also work with children's mental health services um, if that is needed. And just really being able as a community and as an agency to kind of wrap our arms around those kids and you know, help them to see that you know, we can be some of those resiliency factors that help them you know, move through this situation in a more positive way. Children are profoundly impacted mm -hmm. by violence, um, but they are incredibly resilient. Mm -hmm. And so we know with proper intervention like Interact provides that um, we can ensure that these children are not the next um, the next generation mm -hmm. of victims and abusers. Mm -hmm. One of the other things we're really proud of is the work that we do in the school system. Um, trying to reach children where maybe this cycle hasn't begun. 
Um, we're always going to respond to crisis that's core to who Interact is, but the end game has to be to break the cycle of violence. Um, and one of the ways we do that is through our youth education programs within the school system mm -hmm. as well. Well, that's, uh, you know, I was going to ask you actually, you know, in addition to dealing with the problem and mm -hmm. healing those that need to be healed, if we could prevent it some way, right. and that's one of the things that you do? Are there Just other the programs that you have uh, uh, that, re I guess, educate mm -hmm. is, uh, is the question. How do you educate we the population? Speakers, Bureau. Yeah, uh, so we are in the community um, just about five days a week, if not more, going out and talking with, the, um, with our community about these issues, helping them to recognize them and helping them to find ways to stay safe. Um, and so we reach about 50,000 people last year alone um, out in the community, as well as 10,000 students in Wake County Public School System. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's the biggest way for us is if we can reach people and help them to see the signs in their own life, help them to see what healthy relationships might look like, uh, perhaps we can reach those mm -hmm. in our community who have not yet reached out for help. And we also form partnerships um, and raise awareness with them as well, like training law enforcement, emergency room staff, because they may be more likely to come in contact with people who are in need of services that may not have heard about us. So what we want to do is get them on board with how to recognize signs of domestic violence and then help them do that warm handoff for the victim to get access to our services. Yeah, it's just not one victim here. Mm -hmm. It's the whole family. Mm -hmm. Well, stick around, you two. You do fabulous work. And for those of you watching right now and you're going, wow, you know, I'm in this relationship I don't know what to do yeah there's an option for you so don't go anywhere we're gonna come back we're gonna tell you more about uh, things that can help you and to support those who are surviving domestic violence stick around